going to discuss about oracle database architecture related all important question that comes in the interview especially a person who is new to oracle database for them it will be a very important session and also those who are working on l1 or l2 level of resource and even for l3 resource also i can say it will be important because uh, this question might come for anyone so uh, as per my experience i am working as a oracle database resource from last 8 year i have seen uh, interviewers ask question even for l3 l4 resource also so everyone uh, has to know these all questions these are equally very important to everybody because they check uh, your uh, skill level on the core uh, core database skills because on that basis only they can understand uh, your uh, uh, your your level of understanding on the database so i'm going to start few questions that uh, i'll be covering in this lecture and uh, other few questions i'll be covering in the next lecture of this video so yeah first the first question generally my interviewer ask if you are firing any select query on on a database then how it will behave so if uh, any end user is firing a select query or uh, any sql query it will create a user process and from user process uh, through the listener it will validate the host and port and then it will uh, through the server process it will connect to the database and uh, in database especially in the sga in inside the instance it will go for uh, share pool there it will do the uh, in share pool as we know share pool have a library cache and data dictionary cache so in library cache as we know library cache is having us all the executed sqls so first of all it will do the syntax check and semantics check over there and it if it could find the similar executed sql over there then it will return the output through the server process to the end user directly otherwise it will go for uh, dictionary cache as we know dictionary cache is having a metadata of the objects uh, of the database so it will validate uh, the syntax check semantics check and privilege check and after that it will create a be best execution plan on the basis of elapsed timing and the cost and after that um, here uh, there is there is one more question that comes uh, wh what is hard parsing and soft parsing if it is getting the output from the library cache itself like from the executed sqls then it will return that output to the uh, to the end user directly that will be come under a uh, soft parsing but if it goes for a hard parsing so in that case it will create a execution plan it will go for better optimization and then it will uh, fetch that uh, data from the data file from the disk and then through the server process it will go to the buffer cache and then it will uh, return that output to the end user so that's how any ex uh, sql get executed on the database so these two questions are like very important question hard parsing soft parsing this is also very important and then the next question might come oh, what is pga and U uh, uza what's the difference between them so program global area like if uh, any any connection uh, is uh, if your server process is a dedicated server process then it will generate a pga and all the process information will get stored into that process global area otherwise if it is uh, at the time of installation only we have we will get this option to choose uh, otherwise if the ser server process is using a, a shared server a server process then it will uh, store that information into the uza all the end user connection information process information will get stored into the uza that is card user global area so that that is third question i can say and after that there is other few question that may come uh, what is uh, buffer cache that you have to tell what is large pool when it is uh, you, when it is getting used 
yeah this question is very important like when the large pool is getting used so uh, if M mts uh, uh, our uh, your armon is configured on your database then uh, then uh, la, uh, because uh, armon is there it will uh, go for database backup that time also this large pool is getting utilized and even in case of uh, recovery also large pool is getting utilized so this is the use of large pool that you have to tell uh, and uh, the next question can come from buffer cache what is dirty buffer and uh, what is unused buffer so yeah dirty buffer uh, is a modified uh, all the change data, uh, data whatever is there in the uh, database buffer cache like uh, whatever is coming and whatever the uh, changes are happening it's happening inside the buffer cache only so changed data is called as dirty buffer and uh, yeah and after uh, once it is getting changed it is getting transferred to the read log buffer and uh, change uh, read log uh, buffer is uh, nothing but it's storing all the uh, modified data as a uh, as a change uh, read log uh, data and uh, yeah and what is java pool java pool is whenever a uh, ja uh, java uh, related queries are getting executed the our pool will be getting uh, utilized in that case and uh, yeah the next after that the next question can come uh, what is a uh, check pointer and uh, uh, what's the difference between asmon and pmon and uh, what is db writer log writer when that db writer writes when the log writer writes so these are a few conditions that uh, will come and also uh, there is a very important question that can uh, be asked uh, which background process is responsible for uh, uh, AWR generation. So there is a background process that is an uh, optional background process M M1. M1 background process is responsible for um, AWR generation. So as we know AWR is a diagnostic report that uh, that will be used in oracle database very frequently for doing ad any diagnosis on the database issues so yeah so now we'll see um, the condition for uh, check pointer and uh, when the db writer writes log writer writes so there are a few condition on which it writes as you can see uh, w like there are a few conditions i can say on that basis it writes yeah db writer writes whenever the check pointer occurs dirty buffer reach to the threshold there are no free buffer left uh, in the buffer cache there uh, whenever the time timeout occur or rack pings request is made table space offline uh, table space read only like we, we are doing this changes on the table space that time also db writer writes uh, table uh, table drop or truncate table space begin backup back when backup is getting started that time also uh, db writer writes and uh, log writer uh, when the log writer write whenever the commit happen whenever the one third um, uh, read log online read log get filled up that time the log writer writes when, uh, whenever it reaches to one uh, one MB of uh, Rido uh, and every three seconds it writes and also before DB writer writes yeah this is also very important question people uh, interviewer can ask like uh, which one writes the data first like uh, uh, log writer or DB writer so you have to always uh, say log writer writes first uh, yeah before db writer writes means log writer writes first and then log uh, db writer writes so yeah these are the condition and then uh, the next is asmon uh, what is asmon asmon is system monitor uh, there are a few conditions uh, its responsibility like it is responsible for instance recovery uh, roll forward change in uh, read log open database for user access roll uh, rollback uncommitted transaction and uh, call says the free spaces and deadlock temporary segments so these are the uh, 
responsibility of asmon there are some responsibility for um, pmon pmon is a process monitor is it is responsible for cleaning up all the failed processes rolling back the transaction releasing the log releasing the other resources restarting the dead dispatches and the next is check pointer responsibility it is responsible uh, responsible for signaling the db reiter at check pointer and uh, it is responsible for updating the header of uh, data file check uh, check pointer information on the uh, uh, database header and also it is responsible for updating the uh, ha header of a control file uh, all the check pointer information so these are the uh, question comes from here and also after that there are a few question like uh, when uh, uh, yeah the, the, there is one more uh, very important question that what is bind variable and why it's important so yeah we have to know what uh, what is bind variable bind variable when we use a bind variable then our uh, uh, we we no need to go every time for hard parsing actually if we will be using a bind variable it will reduce the uh, lock and latches which is happening uh, while fetching the data so uh, yeah band variable is important it reduce the hard perishing that also i have mentioned it here uh, there is a condition of uh, bind variable like uh, with bind variable uh, in sql oracle can cache a query in a single uh, time in a sql cache area this avoids a hard perishing each time which saves uh, on various lack lack uh, locking and latching resources we use to check the object existence and so on so yeah and the next question is wh uh, what's the difference between uh, no reset log and reset log so no reset log option does not clear the read log during the startup and online read logs uh, will be used for recovery only used in scenario where the manual recovery is 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 started cancel is used and then recover uh, recover database is started read log uh, yeah reset log is uh, never use a reset log unless it's necessary yeah this is a very important uh, condition that we have to keep in mind uh, that we have to tell uh, when we are uh, discussing about the reset reset like open reset log mode when we execute then we have to keep in mind like it if it will be a very important and it is required then only we have to do otherwise it will it will uh, what will it will do it will use the existing read log file and then it will not it cannot be used further again and uh, and any complete transaction in these those read logs will be lost before using a read log option take the database backup once again and what is scn number yeah SCN number this question is also very important P, uh, interviewer can ask this question what is SCN number so SCN number is a uh, is an ever increasing value that is unique identified a commit version of a database at a point point in time uh, even for a point in time recovery this SCN number is very important with the with this we take an incremental backup and we do the um, database recovery by using it uh, even in data guard also it's it's very important by using this whenever the archive gap becomes a higher we use this to do that so yeah these are the questions that can uh, come in your uh, database architecture and also there are a few more questions like uh, what, what's the uh, when uh, the lock switch happen so whenever your uh, the um, current uh, uh, currently used uh, online read log will get filled up it will do the uh, uh, log switch and uh, it will start writing to the next um, read log uh, file and uh, when the uh, archive uh, read log will get archived so wh whenever this uh, read log files will get filled up it will start writing to archive log so yeah uh, there is a condition when the archiving is happening like if your database will be in the archive log mode then only it will go for archiving so your database should be in the archive log mode and also there will be a question comes like uh, uh, which background process is responsible for writing a, 
data from data file to buffer cache so here server process plays a very important role for writing the data from uh, uh, data file to database buffer cache so yeah these are the question that might come uh, in your uh, in your technical round of interview and this will be a, a very basic interview questions i can say so yeah other few things i'll be covering in the next videos thanks for watching